Hey guys, a little too for thy fear with a uh, another deck profile for you guys. Uh, man, I'm just churning out these deck profiles lately. Uh, now this one, I don't think I've ever actually done a deck profile on it. Uh, I mean, I don't think I have. I'm going to have to double check that. But uh, this is a personal favorite of my deck. Uh, this is a personal favorite deck of mine. It's a uh, Herotic Beast. Uh, this is the OCG variant. Um, like If we ever get the OCG stuff, this is the build that I'm going to be playing, and I love this deck so much. It's fun, it's fast. Uh, once it gets going, your opponent just can't do anything against it. Uh, I've, I've run a very weird extra deck. Uh, it's kind of linear, and, but however, let me just say this. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to say it, <laughs> but let's just put it this way. I have a very good win streak with this, even against high-tier decks. I know DevPro is not too liable whenever it comes to... Uh, uh, like you win streaks or anything, but generally speaking, I do tend to win with this more than I do lose. Uh, that being said, though, it does have a few uh, problems with it. Like uh, if you don't draw uh, Leo or Ab uh, uh, Amphis Bane, Bana, Bana, the double headed dragon, um, fair enough, but it has a second head back here. Can hardly see it. Um, if you don't open either of those two, you tend to kind of lose real fast. Um, and that's just what I'm kind of forewarning you about, but however, that hand never happens, like, almost never happens, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, anyways, enough chatter, onto the deck profile, uh, three Leo, he's your searcher, and he, if he's sent to the graveyard in any way possible, doesn't matter how, doesn't matter when, as long as he's sent to the graveyard, you get to search any other heroic beast except for himself, and it, kind of a sad thing is that whenever he's normal summoned, during the end phase, he destroys himself. Now, uh, this is both a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, it's a good thing because he gets certs, and it's a bad thing because if he's your only, like, summon that turn because you open terribly, you're, you're going to have an empty board unless you have, unless you opened up your with your trap cards. Uh, I play three Aber Conway. Uh, he's, first of all, just a really good uh, beat stick. He's the second strongest monster in the main deck. He has 1,800 attack. But, however, his other good thing is that he has a really good effect. If you have two of him in the graveyard, you can banish one other one and add any Heraldic Beast from your graveyard to your hand. You can do this to add Leo and then get another search off. You can do it to add, like, uh, Amis Fane. <coughs> I'm going to pronounce that name ten different times, I can tell you that. But, basically, it, it just helps, okay? Uh, he... Uh, he adds back hand advantage, and that's basically what the deck does, is this deck it generates advantage so much. Uh, now then, I play three... Uh, okay. Am this Bane. 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 You know what? Double-headed dragon. Dog thing. Dog dragon. There. That's what I'm going to call it. Dog dragon. I play three of this guy. Um, basically, you can discard one other Heraldic Beast monster and special summon him. And once per turn, you can discard one Heroic Beast. He gains 800 attack until the end phase. Uh, that second effect, you don't really use that often unless you really just want to load up your graveyard. <coughs> Which, uh, sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Uh, generally speaking, though, I I've only ever used the effect like once or twice. Um, main thing that you want to do is you want to discard either this dude, this dude, or that dude. Uh, actually, you want to... Actually, any of them, except for these three right down here, are really good targets to discard. Uh, I'll tell you this right now, I have had to discard like another copy of him, summon him. I don't like doing that, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to win. And I, didn't, I play two uh, Twin-Headed Eagle. I've thought about bumping him up to three. I'm kind of on the fence about it, just simply because he doesn't do anything himself. But he does help late game when, with, yeah, with your Exceed Monsters. And uh, basically what he does is you can banish him to target one, uh, sorry, from your graveyard. You can banish him from your graveyard to target one face-up XC monster you control with no XYZ materials. And you can target two Heraldic Beasts in your graveyard, attach those monsters onto that XC monster as uh, XC materials. You can only do it once per turn, but hey, that is really, really good. Now then, I play two Heraldic Beast Unicorn. Uh, right now in TCG land, this guy's terrible. <laughs> But, however, in OCG, he's not that bad at all. Uh, basically, you can banish him to target one Psychic-type XC like monster in Graveyard, Special Summon it, its effects are negated. Now, why is this good, you may be asking. Well, it's because of this thing right here. Uh, number 18, Heraldic Progenitor Plane Coat. 
is monster effect while he's on the field you don't really care about but basically if he's sent to the graveyard you can ditch any two heraldic beasts from your deck to the grave it speeds up the deck very very much and you only really need one because of heraldic beast unicorn not an i play one heraldic beast eel uh more to just been simply be another heraldic beast name uh in tcg he's a bit better because uh you, you do tend to actually use him more Basically, if you control two or more Heraldic Beast monsters, you can special summon him. Uh, heck, heck, if you have multiple in your hand, you can just go crazy and can go in like four rank fours. Well, no, two rank fours. But uh, it's a pretty good card. I only recommend playing one just simply because you have to have two Heraldic Beasts in, on your field. <coughs> and it's sometimes hard to do. I mean, it's not impossible, but it is sometimes hard to do. Uh, and then I play two Heraldic Beast Basilisk. This thing is just annoying for people, and he's, uh, if you got nothing else to do, just set him. <laughs> uh, basically, after damage calculation, destroy any opponent's monster that battles this card. Really good. Um, people are very annoyed by this thing whenever they attack into it. Uh, one of my favorite cards in the deck, actually, because it just makes people rage so much. <coughs> but, uh, yeah, aside from that, he doesn't really do much for the deck itself. I play three advanced heraldry art. This card, it's an auto XYZ. You target any Tyrodic Beast monsters in your graveyard, special summon it, summon them, and then immediately after this card resolves, XYZ summon one XZ monster using only those two monsters. It's an instant rank four that needs two monsters. Anything you want, doesn't matter, and you can use this as many times as you want a turn. So if you happen to have multiple, it's just crazy. And even it's it just so good. <laughs> and it's only a rare, too. I think it's a rare. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's a rare or a common. I believe it's a rare. Uh, now, then, I play one Fool's Burial. This deck heavily relies on the graveyard. So, yeah, you do kind of need it. I play three Heraldry Reborn. It is literally Monster Reborn for Heraldic. That is basically, literally, just target one Heraldic Beast monster in your graveyard, special summon it. Boom. Done. That is the card. It, Monster Reborn for Rodex. <laughs> Not much else to say. Uh, two Pot of Duality. You do... It, this is just more for consistency. There are times where you don't want to really do much at all. Or if uh, late game, whenever you can't really do much at all, it, it's just really good. <clears throat> two MST. I, I've thought about bumping it to three. I'm kind of on the fence about that. Uh, mostly because Vanity's Emptiness, it's like a staple right now. And it's really, really annoying. And then also this counters... Uh, I, I hate doing it against cliff offs. I hate cliff offs with a passion. Uh, and I think I actually angered one of my friends <laughs> because uh, he was asking me about something. And uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, now onto this card. Now, I'm sure most of you are instantly going to dislike this so simply because I play this card. This is Rank Up Magic Quick Chaos. It's basically a Rank Up Magic that you can activate during your battle phase. Now, the reason why I like this card is because you can attack with one of your numbers. Rank it up and then attack again. Okay, this card is really good, and you'll see which uh, numbers that I do play that I play to chaos form, and I feel like that this is definitely worth playing in Heraldic Beasts. I still stand by that rank ups are better than what people say. Um, I I really need to do a video on that, like just talking about it. Anyway, so uh, one burial from a different dimension. This card basically it's just select any up to three you remove from play monsters return them to their owners graveyards uh you ban us a lot in this deck especially late game and it just helps out so much with uh, getting your graveyard fodder back in uh two supply unit because activating this normal summoning heraldic beast leo and ending turn and getting to plus two is just awesome uh then i play two heraldic uh, heraldry augmentation this card is literally uh, what was it called? Uh, Dragon Valley... Dragon Ravine! <laughs> this card is Dragon Ravine for Heraldic Beast. Like, almost verbatim. Uh, kind of. <laughs> Basically, one uh, psychic, all psychic type exceed monsters in the field cannot be targeted by spell or trap effects. And once per turn, you can discard any Heraldic Beast monster and add a Heraldry spell or trap card from your deck to your hand except itself... You cannot normal summon or spell summon any monsters during this the turn you activate this effect, except second type at seed monsters and heraldic beast monsters. Now, the reason why I only play two of this is because, generally speaking, there's okay, um, there's only what two, 
three psychic type exceeds that you can actually play in the deck. I mean, I know there's a few rank threes and a few other rank fives, but uh, this, like, <laughs> I mean, generally speaking, whenever you activate this, you're gonna ditch Leo, add Heraldry Reborn, uh, search off of Leo's effect, activate Heraldry Reborn, bring back Leo, normal summon whatever he searched, and then go into Heraldry Progenitor. That's generally what you do first turn if you happen to draw that. Uh, I don't like playing more than th two of the uh, field spells just simply because it, it, it really does limit you on your options for what you can and cannot do uh, during that turn. And then I too put. Uh, if, <laughs> yeah, I could not get the words out for a second there. I play two Wabuku. Uh, I really do like this trap card. It uh, saves my butt quite a lot. It's an anti OTK card. I hate OTKs. <laughs> Even though this deck can do it too if I happen to draw real well. Uh, but however, this card does help me. And yeah. <laughs> and then here's a card that some of you might have not have heard of. And it's actually new out of New Challengers. It's called Phantom Knights of Shadow Veil. Now then. What this trap card does is you target one uh, one face of monster you control, and that target gains 300 attack and defense. And that part does not matter. When your opponent declares an, a direct attack, while this card is in your graveyard, you can spell summon this card from your graveyard as a normal monster with uh, it's a normal warrior, dark, level 4, 0 attack, 300 defense. I don't know why. Uh, in defense position, this card is not a trap card if summoned this way. And if it is summoned this way, banish it whenever it leaves the field. I play two of it. Uh, <coughs> I generally tend not to use its effect unless I also happen to have Wawaku so I can protect it and go into a rank four next turn. Or if like, uh, <coughs> my, my, my main problem with this card is that it does not negate the attack. Uh, I've been testing it out. I happen to really like it. Uh, and it does save my butt quite a bit. It's another one of those anti-OTKs. Oh, hey, my opponent's going for an OTK. Okay, special summon these two out. I just saved my butt. Now, here's a funny thing. If you go into an exceed with this and you detach it, it goes back into the graveyard so you can use it again. That is if you can keep it alive till your next turn. That's why I tend not to use it unless I have Wabaku face down to protect it or if my opponent's going to OTK me and I have to use it. <laughs> now, then here's another card. I feel like people underestimate <laughs> is uh, the word I'm looking for. A cloak and Dagger, Continuous Trap card. Declare any monster card name. If your opponent normal summons or special summons or flip summons that monster face up, remove that monster and this card from play. Okay, so, uh, let me think here. Uh, Bujin Yamato. Okay, you summon Bujin Yamato in any way possible. Uh, he gets banished the instant he hits the field. Does not target, does not activate. The instant he hits the field, he gets banished. Okay. Call Fire Fist Bear. Okay, guess what? Same thing. <laughs> call Blue Eyes White Dragon. Same thing. Okay, you summon any monster I call with this, it gets banished the instant it hits the field. And if, like, it's like a, uh, uh, like an activated effect, like, um, I'm trying to think of, like, an, like, if your opponent activates, like, if you happen to be doing it against Heraldic Beast and they activate this thing, you can chain it and call it, and then the instant it hits the field, since they already activated it, it gets banished instantly, and then, oh, hey, that's one less card you have to worry about. This card, I really do feel like, oh, not that card, this card. <laughs> I really do feel like people underestimate, and they, real, I think people should give it a try. It's very, very annoying. Uh, another, probably more relevant to you guys, uh, option is like, uh, I don't know. Uh, sorry, another really good foul target that I've actually used a few times on is Mermail Abyss Megalo. Oh, hey, they activate Megalo effect, flip this thing face up. Guess what? Mega hits the field, he gets banished. <laughs> okay, it's pretty simple. Okay, now onto the extra deck. I run a very, very odd extra deck if you have not seen already. I play one guy, 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 cowboy because, well, that 800 damage. Uh, one X side on night because, well, JD for free. <laughs> <coughs> I play one Lightning Chidori. Uh, you have a ton of wins in this deck. Like, it's not even funny. I think I played three different wins. Yeah, three different wind monsters. You can make this thing all day, every day. I know that, like, uh, TCG tends to focus on this thing more. I play two, yeah, count it, two 101 Honor Arcs. Uh, this is one of the main reasons why I do play to rank up, because this thing's 
Chaos Exceed just makes the regular version just look terrible. <laughs> like, it really does. Uh, you summon this thing, you go into its chaos form, it's never going to leave the field, and if it does, it's just going to come right back, and it's and you're going to get 2,800 life points. <laughs> I play uh, one Black Shep of Corn, and it, is it just me, or does Black Shep of Corn and 101 look awfully alike? Like, they're, they're both ships, except this one's old, this one's new. <laughs> Uh, I play one number 18 Herald, uh, Herodic Progenitor Plain Coat. I think I explained most of its effect earlier, where if it's sent to the graveyard in any way, you can send any two Herodic Beast Monsters from your deck to the grave. It also has another pretty darn useful effect, where during either player's turn, if there are two or more monsters on the field with the same name, you can detach and exceed material from this card, then to target one of those monsters, destroy all other monsters on the field with the same name as that target. And while he is face up on the field, your opponent cannot summon anything else that has the same name. So, if like, uh, I can just imagine this thing, like, destroying Raid Raptors, uh, since that seems to be what they focus on, is summoning out multiple things of the same name. Uh, but then again, we only got one Raid Raptor, uh, regular monster, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was saying, you, you may be wondering how often will you actually get that effect off. Uh, depending on if you have uh, number 8 Heraldic... King Genome Heritage out. It can actually happen quite often. Uh, since, I've, since I'm already at him, I'll just uh, say his effect. Uh, he needs two Heraldic Beast monsters to go into. Once per turn, you can target any face-up XC monster your opponent controls. Make that thing's attack and defense zero. Negate its effect. And, oh, hey, Genome Heritage becomes that monster, basically. It's attack and defense become that monster's attack and defense. And he gains that effect. It's really, really powerful. It's amazing. Like, oh my god, just being able to copy a 101 in an Ek if you wanted to. You could even rank it up uh, since uh, I believe every it, it becomes that monster, basically. Uh, I could be wrong if you can rank that up or not. Um, but it, it's just really powerful. And then you can actually target this thing, destroy all other copies of it that your opponent controls. And then they can't summon any monster that same name. <coughs> it's just really, really powerful. I do play one Ragna Zero. Yeah, I don't think I have to uh, explain why. And then I play two Dark Rebellion Exceed Dragons. This guy is my new favorite Exceed monster. That's all I've really got to say. Uh, you detach any two Exceed months. Uh, you detach two Exceed materials from him, then target a face-up monster your opponent controls, and its attack becomes half its current attack. And if it does, this card gains that lost attack. This thing is really powerful. I. I uh, if you can't afford 101 in TCG, I recommend playing this thing instead. <laughs> Same thing with like Castell. If you can't afford Castell, I recommend playing this guy. Uh, I really do like him. He's abusive in this deck because you're able to detach those two exceed materials and then reattach them with Twin Headed Eagle so you can just go and do it again onto a different monster or the same one. Heck, I even uploaded a video a very, very long time demonstrating that exact same thing and how powerful it can be. And it, uh, it's just so funny. And people hate it. Uh, and then for my one rank four that needs three level fours, uh, number 69, Herald's Request. Uh, basically, when he's special summon, negate the effects of all other face up exceed monsters currently on the field. Then you can target one face up exceed monster on the field until the end phase. This card's name and original effect become the same as that monster. You can only use this effect once per turn. Not it. Many people think that there are no good rank 4s that need 3 level 4s to go into ever since Shock Ma Ma yeah, Master got banned. Okay, well, first of all, the Satel and I exceeds kind of proved you wrong, dude. <laughs> and secondly, this thing proved you wrong before that even happened. Okay, number 69 is really powerful. Uh, I think Satel and I should be able to play it, like, if, if you can play it. Like, <laughs> it's really, really powerful. Uh, just negating everything else and becoming any exceed monster on the field. It can even be yours. <laughs> like, oh, hey, you have a Phoenix Chained, I don't know, uh, 101? Okay, copy it. Uh, use its effects. <laughs> and hey, guess what? You now have two exceed materials still attached to it, so you can do it again next turn if you still have another 101 out on the field. Just saying. Now, onto the main reason why I played a rank up, and that is uh, number Chaos 101, Silent Honor Dark Knight. Okay, I really hate it how they got rid of Knight in the name. I mean, like, were they afraid of being copyright claimed for Dark Knight Rises or something? Uh, but, anyways, <coughs> this thing basically 
it's 101, and that you don't have to detach for the uh, absorption effect. And if it is killed while it has any exceed materials, and it's sent to the graveyard, and you have 101 in your graveyard, regular 101, you can summon him back to the field, and you gain 2,800 life points. That is really, really good. And he, that, I can't even tell you how much that 2,800 life points has saved me. <laughs> People get really annoyed by this thing. And since he just comes right back, next turn, you can just go ahead and absorb another monster. He can continuously do this. He gets to be a pain in the butt, and he is just really powerful. And having 2,800 attack points, that's not easy to get over. Uh... Now, on to the last XC monster. Uh, number Chaos 69, Heraldry Crest of Horror. Uh, basically, he's the Chaos version of number 69. Uh, it's a normal effect without having to have number 69 attached. Is when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can destroy all the cards that your opponent controls. I think that's just ridiculous. It makes your opponent not want to attack at all. Not to mention, this thing is a 4,000 meter. His second effect, it's basically the same as a uh, regular C90, uh, so C69. Except he also gains that monster's attack. It's just like, okay, I gain your monster's attack, and then, oh, hey, guess what? I can now do 4,000 to your face. And I believe, is the attack game permanent, or is it just... Yeah, it's just until the end phase. But it, it's still really powerful. Um, I've only ever... I make him once in a boom moon. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't happen that often, but when I do... Uh, it either ends well or it doesn't end well. I mean, like sometimes it gets bottomless, sometimes it doesn't happen at all, and uh, mixed things. <laughs> <coughs> Anyways, guys, that is the deck profile. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Rate, comment, subscribe. Have a great day. And by the way, I really hope we do get the OCG stuff one of these days. Uh, I hate Konami for not giving us any OCG imports that are good in a long, long time. But hey, whatever. Have a great day, guys.